In a post Linum TI world, it's likely that a lot of you look at system integrators a little differently, or more likely, exactly the same. After we began our Walmart system review, we put in a last minute rushed order for an iBuyPower RDY, or Ready system, with significantly better parts than what we could get in the Walmart build. This was before Linus had begun his Series 2, and so all we knew was that the parts listing included a 9700K instead of Walmart's 8700, clearly an improvement, and an RTX 2080 instead of a 1080 Ti, while being a lower price. The question was whether or not the assembly was any good, and if any other mistakes were made along the way. Before that, this video is brought to you by MassDrop and the PC37X gaming headset with professional-grade Sennheiser noise-canceling microphone. The PC37X headsets are what we use in the office for phone interviews where audio and mic quality are critical, making for a convenient, high-performance solution for gaming or professional work. The headphones come with a detachable 10-foot cable for safe storage during travel, a standard 3.5mm plug, and soft foam for a firm but comfortable fit over the ears. Learn more at the link in the description below. Before starting on this one, quick trip down memory lane. We had originally ordered the Walmart system in November around Black Friday, and that was supposed to be a $2,000 plus dollar build with taxes, uh, about $2,200 I think. That was an 8700 non-K, it was supposed to be a 1080 Ti. We didn't get that, we ended up with a $1,500 build, but before we got the Walmart system in, what we did was uh, also place an order with iBuyPower for one of their ready systems. So this is something that was actually going to go to a customer. It was on the floor. It was a pre-built system with a, a, a SKU, a specific SKU, so it wasn't a customized one. And uh, Ivy Power pulled it off the line and sent it to us. And it was the same experience you'd get as a customer, which is evidenced by the fact that the same mistakes existed in here as a customer would receive. And we'll talk about those more in a moment. And this is all before the, uh, I think before Linus released some of his series, but also before we released our Walmart video. So this is, we were like just completely blind to what we were getting into at this point. What we ended up with for the Walmart system was an 8700, a GTX 1070 is about a $1,500 SKU. The prices on those SKUs have dropped by several hundred dollars for each one since then. And our system also had an H310 motherboard, which is probably the, the most egregious fault uh, out of the part selection. And so that's got uh, slower DMI, it has one dim per channel, and the case also was pretty bad. It had literally three to four millimeters of space between the glass and the front. And this one uh, is just an NZXT case that's been rebuilt a bit. Significantly more space here, even though it looks closed off. It actually does have a lot more space than the Walmart one did. So we thought, you know, even though it's, it's still pretty closed off, it can at least get some air. So maybe it'll be better. Um, and that's part of what we're testing today. And then finally, the Walmart system used glue, hot glue to hold the USB 3 cable in. Now, Iowa Power in their past has used glue as well, but they don't anymore. So this is, this is a glue-free system. No horses were used to make this system. Uh, but in the past, Iowa Power did use uh, hot glue. It's just they've moved on and progressed, whereas Walmart was just now figuring that out, um, that it's unnecessary. So for this one, what we got was a 9700K, RTX 2080, and... Uh, it was the correct system delivered, so check that box, did that properly. There were mistakes in the build, and they were pretty significant ones, but we got what we ordered, and the parts are there, and all the mistakes were correctable. It's just you shouldn't have to correct them as a customer, which uh, has been obviously now a big point of discussion with Linus' series. And I do want to give Linus some credit here because uh, in speaking with the SIs, they were all like, like on the edge of their seats of what's going to happen next. So... Um, in that series. So we know that Ivy Power specifically made internal changes to fix a lot of the things that Linus talked about, which is great. Job well done to Linus Media Group uh, and job well done to, to Ivy Power and other SIs for listening. This system is one of the last ones that did not have the, uh, the perspective of Linus' series to improve from, but it had other issues that Linus didn't encounter. There's special ones that uh, that we found and we reported back to Iowa Power, they should be improved as well. We still wanted to go through them though. So let's let's start with the part selection. A quick monologue before we get into this. People always like to post in comments whenever anyone does a build. Media Outlet does a build, Paul or Kyle do a build, uh, SIs do a build. People always love to post, why didn't you use X part? And there are good reasons for that. So let me just point a few of those out for you. SIs do not typically work with things like, for example, Nocto coolers. You'll notice here, this is the NZXT M22 rebranded. So the M22 is our least favorite liquid cooler that we've reviewed. 
and uh, we think is a waste of money for the consumer to buy it. Now, that doesn't mean I buy power spending that same money on it. It doesn't mean that you're spending the same money on it you would retail when you buy through an NSI. The reason for that is pretty simple. They get discount rates. They get uh, either distribution pricing or in the case of iWay Power, it's literally in the same building as NDXT. This case is an NDXT case. That cooler is an NDXT cooler. They come from next door. There is no logistical cost involved beyond having someone push a box to the warehouse uh, adjacent to the NDXT one. So that reduces cost on these things significantly. And that's why you see stuff like these partnerships where NDXT case, NDXT cooler, now, there are other, there could be, uh, in some instances, MDF or Marketing Development Fund, money changing hands like Intel, AMD, NVIDIA, typically will run MDF for things like include our chipset logo on your box or uh, include GeForce or um, the game bundle or whatever in your system. That's typically accompanied by money in order to, uh, to help sort of offset the cost to the manufacturer, the SI, when they sell it to the consumer. A lot of the time that money's passed on to you so part selection is all over the place. And sometimes you might just be like, why is only a thousand watt power supply available for the system that doesn't need it? Well, they probably had a lot of them and got a good deal on it. So something to keep in mind, but let's go through the parts choices and see how they priced it out. And then we'll start talking about our, our testing results and some of the issues we had. When we first requested this machine back around early December, late November, it would have cost about 2231 so $2,231 US. That included the RTX 2080, 9700K, all the other components in the system, and uh, the assembly, of course, and the warranty. Identical or similar parts, where identical ones were unavailable, could be purchased for about $1,986. And that's if you bought it yourself without any of the uh, SIs. So strictly like for like, ignoring that you can, yes, get cheaper parts with different names, uh, comparing the cost of the same parts versus iBuyPower for DIY, this is really not a bad deal. It's about $200 overhead to build the system, which we think is fair. You aren't being overcharged for the components. And if you were to instead pick parts that run a bit cheaper but produce the same quality build, you could definitely reduce the price. You get it done for about $1,800, somewhere around there. So that's if you're willing to do things like get a cheaper GPU. This, this video card was about $90 more expensive than going with an, a, a different RTX 2080. You could also reduce $20 on the cooler. You could use like a Noctua NHU14S instead of a Kraken M22. Iowa Power doesn't necessarily have that privilege. And that you got a $30 change in RAM, uh, drop in case price and stuff like that. So we did not factor Windows 10 in here since it's basically free now. That would be another $100 value potentially if you do consider that as a value add. The difference is that Iowa Power gets a lot of its chosen parts for cheaper than we could. Uh, so you end up having to just use different parts in order to, to drop the price. And it can be significant. It's just at some point you do pay for someone to assemble it for you. That's where we need to talk about the assembly quality and the, the build itself. Because if you're paying the premium, maybe 200 bucks, which we think is pretty fair, if you're paying $200 or $400 in some cases more, for an SI to build your system, it better be good. Like everything has to be right. And it wasn't. And before we get into the, the things that are very wrong in this, I'll note that Iowa Power is correcting these. They started working on uh, several of the issues we found after Linus the series. We found a few more, they're working on those too. So problems should be resolved, but um, let's go through them anyway. The target customer for this system will plug their peripherals in, hit the power button and install Steam without ever needing to know what a BIOS is. So that's essentially what we did for the first round of tests. For thermals, we ran our standard case testing suite. We'll look at those results momentarily. And for general performance, we ran our CPU testing suite. The results from these tests are absolutely not comparable to our previously published CPU and case benchmarks because different parts are used. We just use these because, well, it's pretty standard testing. So uh, despite this, we couldn't resist making a sanity check comparison between our previous 9700K CPU testing results and the iWi Power system. We can show some of those results on the screen and just flash through them now. You really only need to see A versus B here. In the process of doing a 9700K standardized test with our very controlled BIOS, versus the iWi Power one, we noticed something odd. The iWi Power system was underperforming in a way that reached beyond the expected difference due to using a different GPU, motherboard, or memory kit. So the difference was far greater than what we should have seen. Entering BIOS revealed one obvious cause. All settings had been set to default values, so no XMP was enabled, and our 3200 megahertz 
kit and quotes there, was running at 2666. Linus Tech Tips noted the same mistake in their recent coverage of an iBuy Power system, but our problems extended further than that, and that's thanks to an old friend, multi-core enhancement. The board used in our system was different than Linus's. Ours used an Asus Prime Z390P with the oldest publicly available BIOS installed. In this BIOS version, setting MCE to auto affects the CPU frequency. This in itself isn't bad. We're not trying to do a baseline CPU benchmark here, and if Iowa Power wants to soft overclock their systems, then that's their prerogative. The problem is that, for whatever reason, this old version of MCE actually underclocks the 9700K, locking it to 3.8 GHz on all cores under sustained load, rather than 4.1 to 4.2 when MCE is manually disabled. That's a big difference in frequency and impact performance significantly, as you saw in some of our our charts we flashed through. There are multiple ways for Iowa Power to avoid this problem. Selecting XMP2 in the ASUS BIOS brings up a prompt that asks whether the user would like to enable or disable MCE. So the XMP and MCE problems could both be solved by toggling a single menu option, something that iWay Power managed to somehow overlook. Also, updating the BIOS to the most recent version not only fixed MCE so that it behaved as expected, 4.7 GHz on all cores under sustained load, but also disables MCE altogether if auto is chosen. And we checked, and newer BIOS versions were available. The BIOS revision that was on here was from well before we ordered the system, like more than a month. So, you know, it's one thing if you buy the ASUS Z390P from Amazon, get it in a box, and it's got the first revision BIOS on it. That's one thing, because that's probably been sitting on a shelf since they ordered it. This was built by someone, booted, presumably, and then they, they still overlooked it. So someone went through the process of turning the thing on, doing some basic testing, and nowhere in that process was it noticed XMP is off, okay, that's one problem, and also the CPU doesn't boost anywhere close to where it's supposed to be. So that's the bigger problem here. And uh, uh, like I said, in fairness to IY Power, uh, the company has put checks in place now to try and prevent this in the future. My understanding is there's supposed to be some more people on the line, or at least more senior people down there uh, who are overseeing things. So we can't we can't vouch to this, but we've been told that these processes have been now checked, so it shouldn't happen again. But obviously, a very serious issue and one which is is so trivially resolved that it is almost offensive. So uh, just just something to to keep in mind is that MCE was an additional problem that. I don't believe LTT ran into. So it's a, something unique for us on that one. For the game results, as we sort of flashed by earlier, it's pretty obvious when something's wrong here. Far Cry 5 at 1080p gives clear insight to this problem. The 9700K review put the CPU at 149 FPS average with the out-of-the-box iBuy power testing landing us at 122 FPS average. Enabling XMP and fixing the broken frequency setting got us back up to 147 FPS average on iWi power, illustrating an out-of-box loss of about 17%. We saw similar results with GTA 5 at 1080p, where the stock result was 170 FPS average with our 2080 Ti bench, mind you, uh, and the out-of-box iWi power result was 148 FPS average. The updated system did 163 FPS average. That's another 9% decay in performance from a bad configuration. The thermal performance of iWi Power system can't be directly compared against any of our previous case reviews since the components are completely different. Even if they were similar, the blower cooler on the GPU and the CLC on the CPU are completely different from our standard case testing. And for the Walmart pre-built system, we simply swapped out the components. So we put our normal case test bench in the Walmart PC case, and that made it a valid comparison. For this one, there was no point in doing that because iBuy Power is just using an S340 Elite that's been modified, and we've already reviewed that case. The initial CPU torture test at the previously mentioned flawed stock settings, MCE on, XMP off, etc., resulted in a delta T over ambient of 38.2 degrees Celsius, which remained effectively the same at 39.1 with the GPU fan locked at 55%, our control. When the CPU was set to proper clock speeds, temperatures rose slightly to 41.3 degrees Celsius over ambient. These temperature deltas result from logged CPU temperatures in the low to mid 60s, mind you, which is more than reasonable for a system running a sustained Prime 95 workload. 
The specific CLC design is one that we've reviewed and we're unimpressed by, but the fact remains that it's a liquid cooler and it's able to overcome uh, any of the issues primarily by brute force. GPU temperatures are the most pertinent for this review since the 2080 packed in our system uses a relatively inexpensive single fan blower cooler, while even Nvidia branded cards have made the move to dual fan coolers. At stock settings with the default fan curve, the GPU maintained a temperature of 60 degrees Celsius, that's over ambient, and that's warm. It's also determined entirely by the maximum temperature the card is willing to maintain, which is about 82 to 83 degrees Celsius. The GPU fan leveled out at a constant 43% speed to stay at this temperature, or roughly 1900 RPM. The alterations to XMP and MZE predictably had no significant effect on GPU temperature, which averaged again 48.8 degrees, so we won't even bother, bother plotting that one. Firestrike was the last of the tests that we bothered performing with the default GPU fan curve. GPU temperature averaged 56.7 degrees Celsius over ambient, and it would almost definitely have averaged between 55 and 60 degrees over ambient in any test with a fully loaded GPU, since that was the target temperature range. So if you're playing games, you're going to see about the same here as you would in any meaningful game that puts load on the GPU. With fan speeds locked, GPU temperature was about the same as it was in the torture test, 48.2 degrees Celsius over ambient and then 49.2 with XMP and MCE changes. We measured this system at 42.8 dBA for noise levels, which is definitely a bit loud. The GPU fan was locked to 55% for these because that's our standard testing for cases but the system could be much quieter with the fan allowed to spin down. The problem is that it gets kind of hot then because it's a blower fan. If you want to see the noise as compared to other cases with our standardized testing, you can check our case reviews, ideally the S340 Elite review, or you can check the Kraken M22 review if you want specific numbers on specific components because uh, otherwise all we're doing right here is just testing the entire system as a whole because that's probably what you're buying. Clearly a lot can be improved then in the performance aspect, just just by setting it up properly. But part selection, build quality, kale management is, is fine. We had no complaints with it, unlike the Walmart system. Uh, so significant improvement over Walmart there. Now, the problem is Iowa is not really competing with Walmart anymore. They're competing with CyberPower, uh, to some extent, Mangear and Origin, although they are different price class. But you get the idea, Zydax, people like that. If you look at this versus Walmart, it is a massive improvement, despite things still being wrong. Uh, so, like, I mean, the motherboard is a real motherboard. It's not a particularly good one. It's the cheapest Z390 board you can get, but it's not H310. So that's a big improvement right there. Um, two sticks of memory that don't suck. That's another big improvement. They weren't at the speed they should be, uh, 3200 megahertz, but they can get to that speed if you set it up properly, and, and theoretically it will be in the future by Iowa Power. So it's... It's faster memory, it's more competently configured in part selection. There's still things we would, of course, change. Like I said, cooler is not my favorite, but Iowa Power probably gets a pretty big discount on those, and we don't know the details. So it's, it's really kind of hard to criticize uh, individual part selection because we don't know what the deals are. But on the whole, it's a significantly better system. It's really the, the takeaway here is Walmart's build we would consider to be incompetent. That would be a fair word to use for Walmart's build. The H310... With, with like nearly half the DMI or something uh, speed. It's it's one DIMM per channel. It's garbage motherboard. VRM's terrible. Uh, they put an 8700 non-K in it for the price. That was very high. Uh, single memory stick and previous generation video card and the margins were just completely insane because again, the, the price has fallen about $400 for some of those Walmart systems. So you know they were making way too much money on them. This is nothing like that. It is more or less the component selection is correct. It's just the configuration was wrong. And, well, I mean, it should be fixed, but until we see it is, you yeah, obviously be a bit careful. Uh, but that's going to stand at this point for, for a lot of these SIs. Uh, they all seem to have problems, as we saw in Linus' series. So, yeah, that's it for this one. The system is... Unfortunately, uh, not quite as exciting as we thought. We, th we thought when we originally did this, got this system, the plan was you're getting this Walmart one in. We have a pretty good on idea of how that quality is. Let's get an incumbent SI system in and just show the disparity between these people have done this for decades, they know what they're doing, and these people are just starting. Let's show the difference. And um, 
it just it wasn't quite the the slam dunk that I think Iowa Power uh, likely s- suspected because of these mistakes. So um, anyway, fixes are in the works. And thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersaccess.net to help us out directly. I'll see you all next time.